Okay. Good afternoon. I'm Audrey Marshall, Work-Based Learning Coordinator for Auburn City Schools, and I'm here today for another installment of our Career Tech Career Corner. And this on this day, we have with us um, Mr. Tim Hickman, who is the Vice President of Human Resources for Global K-9, and also with us um, Daniel Johnson, who is the Director of Compliance and Security. And they're going to share with us this afternoon some items and, and some information about some awesome careers in the animal science pathway um, with Global K-9. And uh, we are going to turn it over to Mr. Hickman and Mr. Johnson. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Thank you for the opportunity for us to step in and uh, talk a little bit about our little company here in Opelika, Alabama. I'll start off uh, first by a short little video, and then I'll go into a little bit of who we are and what we do. Live inspection, documentation, and collaboration for the canine cargo screening industry. This cloud-based application delivers the capability to record canine search team activities in real time and store them to an archival database. That's a good starting point. I need you to work from pallet 70 all the way towards 66. Graphic and audio annotation tools combined with GPS and time date stamp logging helps diminish potential operational risks associated with conducting decentralized operations. Global View provides canine professionals and subject matter experts the ability to audit training, review operational searches, conduct post-action reviews, monitor live searches, and connect directly with teams from anywhere in the world. The future of live canine cargo screening. Global View. So that is who we are and what we do. Um, a little bit uh, about of who I am and, 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 and where my path um, began. Um, I, w I was a young kid right out of high school looking for a direction. Uh, one of the directions that I did understand is how to uh, communicate with the four-legged animal, the uh, canine partners, right? So I um, had pets all throughout my life, hunting dogs. And so I wanted to make that my long life career. And so I was able uh, to join the Air Force immediately uh, after realizing that college was not my wheelhouse at that time. And so I joined the Air Force and uh, got my feet wet in the military working dog program. And so um, kept my nose clean and did 10 years in the Air Force. I, I literally got to see the world um, and was able to do that while I enjoyed my job. So it's really not a job if you're, if you're happy with what you're doing. So, um, so that's how I got introduced into the, uh, to the, to the working dog program and then met great people along the way. I did not burn my bridges um, and kept my canine core and, and what I, my passion of training dogs and uh, training people. And then um realizing the bigger purpose of, of what a canine tool can be used for in, in the world today. Um, what do I do most about, uh, what do I enjoy most about my job? My job allows me to talk to uh, a large group of people uh, around the world and, and uh, teach and educate them on the canine philosophies and the breakdown of behavioral uh, issues and, and teach them how to work a dog in a working environment and get them educated to go out there and, and perform a, a job skill, either it be law enforcement, contracting work overseas, or and even uh, stateside. So I enjoy teaching students um, as, as much as your teachers love teaching you guys. Uh, did anything surprise me about this job when I um, started getting into it? Absolutely. I realized one thing that I didn't know everything. I was surprised that I didn't know everything. So what I had to do was open up my mind and understand how to uh, under, uh, uh, comprehend different diversities of, of dog behaviors. And so um, one thing more importantly than the rest of them is that how much science is involved. There's a great deal of science involved. Um, I was able to uh, be on staff at the Auburn University's K-9 Performance Science Program and was able to work a lot of technology uh, and science involvement with the canine um, enhancement. And so I was able to um, 
get a bigger perspective other than just being a law enforcement dog or some kind of threatening uh, animal that's on the other end of the leash. Um, so that was a, that was a big um, perspective for me. Um, what advice would I give to the younger, my younger self? I would uh, give advice of be a sponge. Absorb as much as you possibly can in whatever passion that you want. If it be a nurse, um, a, a bass pro fisherman, um, a cop, a lawyer, whatever profession that you choose to be, that calling that you have, absorb as much as you want to because you're not really going to have anybody that's going to push you. You might have one or two mentors out there, but go out there and pursue it and absorb as much skill set as you possibly can. That would be my, my advice to you. Um, what are some of the everyday challenges that I face as a profession? Reminding teams that there is a purpose for why they are out there. It's easy to get complacent with going out there and searching cargoes, searching vehicles, uh, walking a line for security entry control points. It's easy to get complacent, but the purpose they're out there is to save lives, whether it's finding the explosives before they board an aircraft or finding narcotics before it gets on the streets. So there's a purpose out there. So that, that's my big challenge to people uh, to remind them why they have a, a role out there to serve. Um, if I wasn't in this career field, what would I be doing? I'd be sitting at a desk thinking about training dogs. So um, that's that's clear. I mean, I had no issues about that. But if I was at a desk, uh, I think uh, it would definitely be a teacher coach kind of mentality. And I feel like that now that I get the opportunity to do that because we have um, a large number of students and employees that come through here and I'm able to teach them and coach them how to work their dog in a, in a working environment. Tim. All right. All right. Thanks, Daniel. So what I want to do now is, is Daniel talked about his background and Daniel's one of our top canine guys. Uh, he is the guy that we go to uh, if there are any issues out in the field with the canine handler team working. Daniel's the one that looks at that video and helps correct that. So I just want to talk to you in, in general. What do we do? You know, what, what is a job with Global Canine? What's a day in the life of a canine handler, which is really our main job? So Global Canine is a company that takes uh, a canine partner and a handler team, and they match them up and they go to an airport somewhere in the country. We have people in Hawaii, Alaska, California, Florida, Georgia, uh, all over the country. Uh, and basically what they're doing is they're taking their canine partner and they're working under the direction of the Transportation Safety Administration. So we work with airlines, but under the direction of the Transportation Safety Administration. And, and today, 100% of all cargo that goes onto a passenger aircraft has to be screened for explosives uh, and we train we purchase the dogs we imprint the dogs and teach them how to sniff out and identify these explosives and then they go with their canine um, handler to an airport and they're working in a cargo hold and they're clearing that cargo before it goes on a plane that you or your your parents or family is going to fly on so they're screening that cargo to make sure that there's no explosive content or nothing in that in that content that could that could uh, to cause that plane to go down at some stage. So it's a very important job. And, and the cool thing about the canine industry is it's really easy to find the bigger purpose of what you do. Um, you're literally protecting lives. Uh, uh, maybe not in the same way that a police officer does it, but in the way that you're making sure that anything that goes on an airplane that flies people, uh, your family members is, is safe. Um, so these dogs we purchased from Europe, uh, all of our dogs right here in Opelika, we got about 65 dogs on site right now. Uh, we just brought in, what are we bringing, 20 today, Daniel, I believe. That's right. Uh, they just flew over from Europe. Um, so we'll get those, we'll quarantine those dogs, uh, make sure health-wise they're safe and good, and then we'll put them into the population. Uh, from that stage, uh, the canine's gonna go into a kennel, and then we're gonna start the training process. So the first process is, is we, we set them up with trainers. So our trainers are people that are very, very specifically just making sure that they're imprinting that dog, teaching that dog to identify nine different explosives um, so that dog can show a change of behavior and sit down because the dog has to have a way of identifying, hey, there's something wrong with this box or this piece of cargo. Uh, so those imprinters are constantly working with them. And I think Daniel's going to show a video uh, to make sure that they can identify what that explosive is. So once they're imprinted and they're good, uh, the next phase is to match them up with a canine handler. 
So our handlers, which is the largest majority of our population, uh, they got the coolest jobs in the world to me. Uh, so their, their partner on a daily basis is their dog. So they have to come train in Opelika for eight weeks. Uh, they get paired with a canine partner and they are learning specifically how to search cargo. And you can see it on the video right now. So this is the imprinting part. Um, uh, you can see uh, Holly there and she's actually taking that dog and she's gonna, there's an explosive scent that's hidden in those boxes behind you. So Holly's job is to go ahead and work, uh, work that dog and make sure that that dog can identify that explosive. So if you watch it, uh, she'll get it under control there. The dog will put its nose in each box. Uh, and he's like, hey, there's something right there. So he sits down and he gets a reward. Uh, that's as, it's as simple as that. Uh, we want the dog to sit down and show us, hey, I'm not ready to move on. There's something here. Uh, so once that dog's imprinted, uh, it goes through eight weeks of training with the handler. Uh, per TSA, the Transportation Safety Administration, they have to be paired for eight weeks uh, to create that bond. So it's very important that you create a bond with your canine. Uh, and then they go out uh, and they go to whatever airport it is in the country, uh, and they're working with their canine partner at that airport uh, screening cargo. The great thing about our industry is the growth that we've gone through. Uh, man, it's just a, such a great career field because it's growing exponentially right now. Um, right now, 100% of cargo that goes on passenger air, aircraft has to be screened. In 2021, 100% uh, of all cargo, so UPS, FedEx, DHL, Amazon, all those guys, now have to screen their cargo. So that opens up the industry tenfold. Uh, so we potentially could go from 200 employees to 600 in the matter of a year uh, with that industry, uh, in, uh, excuse me, with that uh, additional cargo uh, and screening capabilities. Uh, the other thing, so you've got your, your, your trainers, you've got your dog handler that's actually working the canine. Uh, the other thing we have is we have a lot of instructors. So those are people that are actually working, uh, teaching, the handler and the canine uh, how to work together, showing them how to sniff cargo and how to work cargo. A lot of little industry, uh, intricacies involved with making sure the dog is a certain um, distance away from whatever it's screening. So lots of things that go into it. Uh, so there's a plethora of jobs, training, instructing, handling. Um, you get to travel a ton, uh, which is great. We have folks in Hawaii and Alaska uh, we have what we call TDY assignments, which is really cool. So if you're based at LAX Airport in Los Angeles and we need some help in Salt Lake City and you'll take your K-9, you'll run up to Salt Lake City and work for two or three weeks, uh, a different environment, different airport, uh, helping those guys out. Uh, you also have the ability to travel back and forth to the, the corporate center here in Opelika where we do all of our training uh, to get annual um, uh, certifications and different things, uh, different training that takes place here. Uh, so you get a, a, lot, a lot of chance to, to move around and, and see the country. Uh, salary wise, man, the dog industry is great uh, and it's really easy industry to get into. Uh, and it's different than most people think, but you have kennel technicians, which are folks that are taking care of the dogs. So their main responsibility is is feeding, watering the dogs, bathing the dogs, making sure they have their uh, their medicines uh, and their their annual vet visits. Uh, those guys can make you know starting out at ten dollars an hour up to a handler that's working at LAX Airport that may make seventy seventy five thousand dollars a year. Um, so there's a wide variety of jobs in this industry. Uh, from an education standpoint, you know the great thing about our industry is it, it's so new what we do. Uh, you, you don't have to have 20 years of dog experience like Daniel does. It's great, but you don't have to. Um, regardless of what you've done, you're going to have to go through that eight-week program just like everyone else uh, in order to get certified by the Transportation Safety Administration. So at the end of that eight-week program, you got to go in, a third party comes in, they hide explosives around the facility, and they make sure that you and your canine can actually find that. Um, so you don't have to have uh, a certain amount of education, uh, but what you do have to have uh, is you have to have the ability to love your dog. Uh, you have to have a great attitude uh, because you're going to be representing our company. So, so we're not at LAX Airport or Orlando Airport but you are. So you're in front of Delta Airlines and United Airlines. So customer service is actually a big part of this job that a lot of people don't think about. Uh, so your attitude and the way you interact with uh, with the people around you is very, very important. Um, uh, 
Uh, attention to detail, big, big part of this job because there are a lot of guidelines that you have to follow when you're working with explosives. Um, so all these things are, are things that would make you a, a viable candidate to do this job. The greatest thing you can do is come get a job as a kennel tech because we need them all the time and we need good ones. Because as soon as you can learn to take care of the dog, you can learn to work the dog. Uh, and we've had a lot of uh, people that have come through and been kennel techs. And just recently, uh, I think we've promoted three or four uh, that worked in kennels, uh, not doing the nicest job in the world, but now they're handlers uh, in Chicago, L.A., and uh, JFK in New York. Um, so, so they went that progression route. Uh, we have a lot of handlers that want to get into supervisory roles, so you're able to do that as well. Um, so there's a lot of room for advancement in the canine world. Um, once you get in and you get that dog uh, and you build that bond with that dog and you work that dog, there's a lot of other possibilities. Uh, even working in a corporate office like Daniel and I do, um, uh, kind of guiding the entire field all over the country. Uh, is there a common misconception about this career? Uh, when I talk to people on the phone all the time, they think, man, you know, I get to work with a dog. This is fun. It's not a pet. Uh, so so I think that's the biggest misconception that I see when I interview people uh, that they think, oh, I've got a pet. It's going to sleep in the bed with me. I can feed it sharp cheddar cheese. It's a working dog. It's in a kennel. Um, it's got a very strict diet, um, but they're super, super good dogs. Uh, I've actually adopted one of our dropout dogs at home. So I have a Belgian Malinois at the house. So that'll tell you how much I love dogs. I have three of them and a hamster. Uh, so we're animal people in my house. Um, I think the other thing uh, that a lot of new hires, uh, mistakes they make when they interview is they don't do enough research and understand what they're getting themselves into. So I think it's important if you're interested in a job in the canine world, we're right here in Opelika. I would absolutely love for anybody to come out. Uh, we'll take them around, take them on a tour, show them the facility. I can talk to them in more detail. Um, go on the website, do some research, uh, and, and find out what you're getting yourself into. Too many times I talk to people on the phone and, and they don't have a clue what they're interviewing for. They don't even know the industry or what it's about or anything about the company. So I think it's very important as a new hire, whatever job you go to, uh, do a little research, find out about the company uh, who you're going to be talking to so you can go in prepared. Boy, Tim, we're going to have you on a dog before too long and put you in LAX or JK. My dog was a failure, so I got to get a new dog. <laughs> Good job. All right. Uh, and, and real quick, and Daniel and I both can talk about this, um, but just, just looking at success. So, so regardless, I've been in the human resources field for 22 years, uh, working in canine and a, a most of my careers in aerospace and aviation manufacturing companies and automobile manufacturing. Um, one of the questions here that I wanted to answer, because I thought is a really important one, is how do you find, define success? Um, and, and I'll tell you, for me, it's no matter what you do, what are you doing for the people around you and who do you work with? Are you bringing up people around you? Uh, Daniel hit it on the head uh, when he talked earlier and he talked about how he enjoyed helping people in the field and helping them learn uh, what they were potentially doing wrong or how they could do a better job of working with their canine. Uh, anytime where you can go into any type of job or career and you can come out of it and say, man, I helped this person or I helped this group do a better job at whatever they were doing, then you're probably going to be successful because it's about helping the folks that are around you. Um, uh, Technical skills uh, are really important to have for the job, uh, but the biggest technical skill you're going to have is working a, a camera on your chest, as, as you saw the video earlier, um, working that global view. And you have to download that video um, onto a website so people like Daniel can go in and review that video. So we're constantly trying to get better. And I think that's really, really important uh, for any company. Uh, and the way we do that is Daniel looks at video uh, all day long, a lot of days, right, Daniel? Uh, and he's looking at what, what is that handler doing wrong? What can that handler do better? So from a technology standpoint, there is a lot of technology with our company. It's not just handling a dog or working a dog. Uh, the best question I've ever been asked in an interview, and I'm going to turn it over to Daniel for some of his input. Uh, uh, greatest question I ever asked or was ever asked to me was, why did you take this job? 
And, uh, and uh, I'll never forget it. I was working for uh, General Electric and uh, someone said, why did you take this job? And I said, well, I thought it'd be a great company to work for. And then they looked at me in the face and said, what is it? <laughs> did you make the right decision? And I said, you know what? I think I, think I did. Uh, but it really started having my mind churn a little bit as to, uh, to why you do things. Whatever you do, um, go to a job where you think you can uh, where you see yourself doing it for a long period of time. And it doesn't always work out, but it's really important. If you can find your passion and what you love, and if it's animals uh, with us, uh, you get to work around them every day. So if you can find that passion uh, and get a job where you get to work with something that you love doing, uh, it makes it a lot easier to go to work every day. Yeah, Tim, thanks. And just looking at the questions here, and, and how can someone enter this career stand out? And how can you perform, right? Well, um, we all were brought up differently, right? We have different dynamics of how our family structured us to the people that we are today. So I was lucky enough to grow up on a farm and understand what hard work and dedication and the the product of the final product is, right? So I carry that over to who I am today. So I treat people with respect. I work hard, I punch in, I punch out, I use integrity. And that is how really, that's where it got me where I was today. Not that I went out and, you know, pushed my boss, hey man, I need a promotion. Well, I, my work spoke for itself. And so I was lucky enough to work hard, have a good background underneath me already. And so that's what got me on the ladder of success to where I am today. I wouldn't, um, uh, I, I kind of joke with some of the floor uh, trainers on the floor and they're like, do you miss this? Do you miss instructing students? I'm like, I'm missing 17,000 steps a day to come up here to an opportunity that I have it. When I used to walk the floor and manage the training teams and then work the dogs and, and instruct that way. But it's given global canine the opportunity to, to make me succeed, but also help them out as well. So even though you, you might not think that you're realizing what you're doing, but for the bigger goal uh, of the company, it goes a long way. Uh, another question here, what advice would I give with someone changing careers? If you're able to do that, and there's another question here, and, and networking, right? So canine community is really small. I think Tim's found that out really quick. So there's only, there's less than a half a dozen of large corporation canines that produce the mass dogs that we do. And our competitors really are on a government level. And so we've done really well in the short amount of time that we, we've been here in Opelika. And the industry is small, but just like any other career field, you, you, you want to keep your nose clean, network with the best, make a good reputation of yourself, and, and that will go a long way. Your work and productivity will, goes a long way uh, more than just, you know, telling people how good you are. Yeah, great way. And just, just kind of in closing, uh, one of the things I'll leave you, uh, I think Daniel said it really well right there, is – uh, the advice I give my kids, uh, I've got a senior who grew up at Auburn. He's at least got now, but uh, I tell him all the time, if you're a French fry cook, be the best French fry cook you can be. Show up to work on time. Have a great attitude. Have a smile on your face. Have your boss saying, man, I don't know what I'd do without this guy cooking French fries. Uh, if you're an attorney, be the best attorney you can be. Do it with integrity. Uh, uh, motivate people, inspire people, help people. Be honest in all that you do. And if you do that, it doesn't matter what you do. You're going to move to the next step. Uh, the canine community is a very tight knit community. Uh, and if you come into it, then everybody in the world is talking about Daniel Johnson. Man, that guy knows what he's doing. Uh, if he ever leaves global, we're grabbing him up. So whatever you do, do it to the best of your ability. Uh, and I guarantee you, people are going to notice that and they're going to tell their friends and they're going to go out and say, man, you need to hire this guy because uh, he's too good for this job he's in right now or she's too good for this job she's in right now. Uh, and I think that's the most important thing you can do, no matter what, what career you go into. Hopefully it's canine. Come see us. Daniel, and I are going to take you around and show you around. But even if it's not canine. Be honest, be ethical, do the best job you can do every day. Show up to work on time. Don't make excuses and it's going to go notice. You never know what customer comes in behind the counter on the other side that says, man, that guy makes me feel good every time I buy a hamburger. And then they go tell someone, man, there's a kid over here that'd be great in this job. And they come recruit you. Uh, that way you're not looking for jobs. People coming to get you because they know you'll do a great job for them. Such excellent advice from both of you today. I, I just want to do a little recap, and I hope that everybody's listening very well to this video. It's just been great, great, great. But 
Uh, going back to what Daniel said, uh, Mr. Johnson, about being a purposeful person and don't get comfortable and complacent. I want to re-emphasize that for our students too. And and um, one of the things that um, Global K9 does offer, there's a, com a company that's diverse. They talked to you today about one side, but there's a tech whole other technology side to them too that hopefully we'll bring them back and be able to talk about in another session. But um, they've got a government contract. But if you're around, I know this summer we saw you all here at Auburn High School. Yep. So uh, they have other clients too, not just those government contracts. So looking at a company with longevity and job security and all of that. And I want to uh, segue with saying that um, they have even offered our students at one point in time and Hopefully this will be something that would be out there available too, especially with all the numbers that they're growing with, is an opportunity to start off at a kennel tech for a high school student. So if that is something that you're interested in, I want you to come by to see me and I can get you connected with the folks out there at Global. And we would love to have that as an opportunity for you. And I'm going to, um, the next thing I want to mention too, um, Mr. Hickman was talking about researching careers. That is something that we want our Auburn High School students to always know. Don't go into an interview cold. You make certain that you've done your research. And as Mrs. Hannah and I um, are partnering together this year to bring to you all these videos about what we have going on here in our community, um, this is just another opportunity for you to get a peek inside of some of the different companies that we have in our area. So that would be helping with some of your research, not not the only thing, but do some research there yourselves. But I'm going to leave on this question because this is the million dollar question, or it may not be the million dollar question, but it's a cup of a few hundred or a few thousands of dollars. But how much are these dogs costing? I, I, I can't believe y'all didn't mention that. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Go ahead, Daniel. Well, it ranges. It's, it's varied. I've been uh, lucky enough to keep my head above the water for 22 years in this career field. So, we're, we're lucky enough to lock down vendors in Europe. Europe has the best quality of dog. Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with our stateside guys, but Europe has the dogs that we're looking for. So we'll go over there and purchase a dog uh, roughly from 35 to 5,500 green, very young, mm -hmm. under two years old, very medical uh, sound. That means their, their joints are good, their spine's good, their teeth are good. And so we got a good procurement team that goes overseas and does that for mm -hmm. us. And, and they get a medical ev evaluated, x-rays are sent to our in-house vet here. Uh, he takes a look at them and says they're good. And so when the final product hits the ground and the handlers teamed up with them and they go out, we can look at around twenty five to thirty thousand dollars for a dog team. Mm. Yeah, so. Wow. And and just think about this. That's really neat. I thought that was one of the most interesting things I um, heard when I first was introduced to uh, Mr. Hickman with this company, too. But we uh, want to thank you both. What an excellent job and an excellent session that we've had today here with you both and um, want to go ahead and close out this um, segment of Career Corners with Mr. Hickman and Daniel Johnson of Global Canine Protection Services. And thank you all for joining us today. Thank, thank you, guys. You.